It will be hard to find at any church a more delightful and dedicated group than the senior adults. Welcome to another worship service of Victory Baptist Church. It's the May 1st, 2022 worship service where we recognize and honor our senior saints. What a dedicated and delightful group they are at Victory Baptist. We are so proud of them. We are so grateful for each and every one of them. And I know that you're in for a blessing as, again, we recognize and honor them. With the message, the wonderful outcome awaiting God's senior saints. And don't miss the special music we have, those long-lasting eternal hymns that bless every generation. Stay tuned. The service is about to begin. The Lord has given us a wonderful day in which to worship Him, and it is now the hour of worship. I ask you to please stand with me at this time as we begin our time of worship on this Senior Adult Sunday, Recognition Sunday, by the quoting of God's Word. Let's say it all together. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. For I know him, Abraham, that he will command his children and his household after him, and they shall keep the way of the Lord to do justice and judgment. Genesis chapter 18, verse 19. Let's remain standing as the ladies lead us in worship through singing. Sing along with them.
Brother Eddie Chatham, would you lead us in our opening prayer, please, sir? Heavenly Father, most holy God. Yes, Father. We come together this morning to worship you on this day that you have made. We thank you, Lord, for those who attend, those that may not be here due to sickness. Yes. Lord, we ask your blessing and comfort to them. Lord, we have a neighbor across the road, Brother Ralph Malcolm, who lost his yes, wife Lord. last week. <clears throat> Lord, he once was a member of this congregation. He still follows you, Lord. And yes, Lord. We ask you, Lord, to, to be with him and comfort him in this time and, and comfort his family. Yes, Father. Lord, we have lots of problems around the world that you're very much aware of. Lord, we pray that <clears throat> people would have sense enough and presence of mind to call on you. Yes, Lord. And ask for your blessings and, and your comfort on them. Go with us now through this service. Bless Brother James as, as he brings your message. And as, as we depart today, go with us and, and keep us safe. Yes. All this we ask in Jesus' sweet name. Amen. Amen and amen. Thank you, Brother Eddie. You may be seated. Let me call your attention to the bulletin or to the screen for our announcements. Our giving through last week for the Annie Armstrong Easter offering for North American Missions was $1,665 toward our goal of $1,750. But I got it through good authority that another $100 has been given. So therefore, we've exceeded our highest goal, the praise the Lord goal. And all God's people said, praise, praise the Lord for that. Amen. And then... Today is Senior Adult Day, where we recognize our senior adults, and we'll do that just a little bit later in this time of announcements in a very special way, and then I'll be preaching a message for our senior adults to encourage them. This Thursday is the National Day of Prayer, and you'll probably hear some about that on some of your social media sites. Let me encourage you that if there is a place that is gathering, and you're able to get off sometimes at the courthouse steps, sometimes at a flagpole, or if you can't be at those places, please be in special prayer for our nation on this National Day of Prayer, Thursday, May 5th. And then next Sunday is Mother's Day, and we'll be recognizing our mothers in our worship service with a very special gift, as well as recognizing them and their presence here. So we wanna give them something to take home with them and we'll be taking up a special offering for our Georgia Baptist Children's Home. And we have two campuses in Baxley and in Meansville, or in Baxley, we have three or two? Three. Three campuses, okay, Baxley, Meansville, and in Palmetto. And that offering will go to help support the needs of those children. Also on Mother's Day next Sunday, part of the service, not only recognizing our mothers, but our youth will be uh, serving and that will be part of our Youth Sunday. And uh, we'll be recognizing the family all through this month, all the way up till Father's Day, preaching on the family. So important, so needful in these days. May 22nd, those of you on church council, you need to uh, make plans to be with us for a very important planning time after the service. Now, to recognize our senior adults, I want everybody that's under the age of 105 to please stand. If you're under the age of 105, please stand, okay? All right, now, come on. I need everybody participating, all right? Okay, you're under the age of 105. All right, now listen very carefully. If you're 54 years of age or younger, you may be seated. 54 years of age or younger, you may be seated. Now, remember, you're in church. Don't be, don't be tough. All right. We're recognizing those senior saints, senior adults who are 55 years of age or over. I'm standing with you. Look around, see who's still standing, and let's give them all a round of applause and recognition. God bless you. Do we dare ask who the oldest senior saint is? All right, let's do that, okay? If you're, if you're 70 or younger, you please be seated. 70 or younger, you please be seated, all right? 
All right, 71 or younger, please be seated. 72 or younger, please be seated. 73 or younger, please be seated. Who we got standing? Two more? Three. Three. Who's, who's the other third one? Guy. Oh, Guy? Okay. <laughs> Marcia? All right, let me just ask of those three. How old are you, Brother Guy? 76. 76. Anybody beat that? All right, Marcia can beat it. How old are you, Sister Rosemary? 75. 75? 76, Marcia? 77. She's the oldest present. Amen. God bless you, Sister Marcia. Amen. And we appreciate all of our senior adults. Let's go ahead and stand again, turn to one another, welcome one another in the name of the Lord as the ladies get ready to lead us in another hymn, number 522, When the Morning Comes. Would you please stand, welcome, and sing? Would you please? God bless you, sing your sing. When the morning comes.
So if you want to applaud the Lord, give him praise. Let's do it. Amen. Amen and praise the Lord. You may be seated as you take your copy of God's Word. On this Senior Adult Day, Senior Saints celebration, if you will, and turn to the 92nd Psalm. We're going to be looking at verses 12 through 15 in particular, but I want us to read the entire Psalm, only 15 verses. So you ready? Psalm 92, beginning with verse 1. It is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord, and all God's people said, and to sing praises unto thy name, O Most High God, and Sister Lynn and the choir say, Amen. To show forth, to display thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night upon an instrument of ten strings and upon the psaltery, upon the harp, with a solemn sound, for thou, Lord, hast made me glad through thy work. I will triumph in the works of thy hands. O Lord, how great are thy works, and thy thoughts are very deep. A brutish man knoweth not, neither doth the fool understand this. When the wicked spring as the grass, and when all the workers of iniquity do flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But thou, Lord, art most high forevermore. For lo, thine enemies, O Lord, for lo, thine enemies shall perish. All the workers of iniquity shall be scattered. But my horn, that is my strength, shall thou exalt like the horn of the unicorn. I shall be anointed with fresh oil. My eye also shall see my desire unto mine enemies, and mine ears shall hear my desire of the wicked that rise up against me. The righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. Those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. They shall still bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing. To show, that is to proclaim, that the Lord is upright. He is my rock, and there is no unrighteousness in him. The wonderful outcome that is awaiting our senior saints. This is the message this morning. This is the message that I want to encourage all those who are nearing those ages of being categorized as a senior adult. I know that sometimes that's a mixed feeling. When I went to the hospital to visit my mama several years before she passed away, I was still pushing just 50 years of age and I went to see her on the day that she had just been admitted. And I was in the room with her. And I said, Mama, I said, I'm going down to the cafeteria to get me something to eat. Do you want anything? She said, no. So I went and I just got a little fruit bowl and a milk. And I went through the line. And after the cashier gave me the charge and I gave her a bill and started getting the change back, I realized she had undercharged me. And I said, ma'am, said just this fruit bowl is more than what you just charged me. I, you didn't charge me enough. She said, I gave you your discount. <laughs> and I looked at her, and because I was in a suit and tie, I thought maybe she thought I was on staff there at the hospital, possibly even one of the physicians. And I said, what kind of discount? I shouldn't have asked her that. She said, your senior adult discount. And I just kind of stood there and looked at her, and I said, how old do you have to be to be a senior adult? She said, 55. And I hadn't been, I told you I wasn't even 50 yet. Now, she wasn't a young person looking at somebody that was older than her. She looked like Grandma Moses, not to be disrespectful, but she was a lot older than me. And I said, well, I'm not 55. And that seemed to startle her a little bit and embarrass her. And she said, well, that's all right. That's my fault. 
So I went up to the room to Mama and told her what happened, and she giggled a little bit. It wasn't too long after that that the doctor on call came in. He had not met me or Mama, and he walked in. I was leaning against the window sill, the sill at the opposite end of the room. Mama was in between us. He looked at me, looked at Mama, looked at me, looked at Mama, stood by her bedside and said, Mrs. Cook, and she said, he said, or she said, yes, and he said, I'm Dr. So-and-so, and then he looked up at me and looked back at Mama and said, is this your husband? <laughs> Mama got a real big giggle out of that, and she just snickled and snorted and snorted, and then she said, no, that's my son. He didn't look up, acknowledge that or anything, apologize. He just went ahead and talked to Mama and walked on out of there. And when he left, I said, Mama, I'm going back home and going to bed. <laughs> Not only did I look older than what I was, I was even thought to be my mama's husband. And so being old age, that is, being a senior adult, even that term old age, we, it comes with mixed emotions. But then you start getting discounts at the stores. I'm asking for them now. Do you give senior adult discounts? That's nice. People seem to get out of your way a little bit more now. They respect you, sir, no sir. And so there's some mixed emotions with that. Well, here's the thing about this message today. The Bible tells us in verses 12 through 15, and I want you to see it again, the righteous shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. These are two trees known both for their beauty and for their ruggedness. And those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our Lord. There's a promise there. They shall bring forth fruit in old age, and they shall be fat and flourishing. Now, when you read that word fat in the, New, in the King James Version, it's not talking necessarily about your body weight, okay? Although that can be true for many of us senior saints, it seems that the older we get, the more pounds that we put on. But this is fat with blessings, just like a tree is fat with sap, and it's producing, and it's still alive, and it's still vibrant. And so this is the blessing, this is the prospect for the righteous senior saint. Now, for most senior saints, when we start thinking about the olden years, and we try to change that from olden and add a G to it, to golden, to make it sound a little bit better, it can be challenging years. Our health is not at all what it used to be. Not too long ago, somebody sent me a video that somebody had copied and put on YouTube of one of the football games I played in high school back in 1972. How long ago was that? 50 years ago. And I got that video and I looked at it and I stayed up half the night watching that video over and over again and I was especially watching that guy that was playing who had the jersey number 10 on for the College Park High School fighting Rams. And what I watched particularly was how when I got knocked down, I just jumped right back up. And how when somebody that was bigger than me, running faster than me, I would just lower my head and with unabandoned skill, just ride my the whole body into him without any kind of care and get knocked down and knock him down and then jump back up. And I did that the whole game. And the chair I was sitting in after I got through watching it, I could barely get up out of. And I just thought, boy, it has changed physically. And I've got the glasses on and I've got the teeth and the dentures on to show you how much that... Uh, uh, getting old, it, things change physically. But somebody said, the older you get, the richer you become. You got silver in your hair, gold in your teeth, lead in your feet, and gas you know where. <laughs> it is a challenge with mixed blessings. But you do get to thinking about things spiritually, and you get thinking about things mentally. You've got a lot of life that's passed yeah. under the bridge a lot of water that's going under the bridge and so sometimes you sit down and you don't contemplate the future you think about the past mm -hmm. and you've got more memories in the past than you do plans for the future there's a point in time listen to me young folks what i'm talking about and so that kind of weighs on you a little bit it, it plays with your emotions 
And then when you think about your coming to that time when you depart this world to enter into the next world, it's getting closer every day. When you're young, you don't think about that as much. But when you get older, you know that each and every day is an extra special gift from God. You seem to sit around and enjoy the beauty of God's creation more. And haven't these been beautiful days that the Lord has given us? I hope that you've been able to take a little bit of time at least to walk outside, whether it's at your home or whether it's your uh, place of work, and just look at the beautiful flowers and look up into the sky sometimes and see that beautiful blue contrasted with the green that's sprouting forth now at this time of the year. And that beautiful blue sky and its expanse some days just... Uh, just uh, spotted with those puffy clouds and then listen to the birds sing if you can't see them at least listen for them if you can't listen for them or see them just know that they're up there and they're praising the Lord it's just beautiful and you think more about those things in your time of life and the challenges of getting to be a senior saint you need to understand that to be a senior saint, you've been blessed a lot more than many people. Just to get to the age that you are now, 55 and above, a lot of your friends didn't make it that far. A lot of your friends didn't get to walk down the aisle with their child to give them off in marriage, their daughter or granddaughter. They didn't get to go to those ball games and enjoy the things that you've enjoyed. They didn't get to live with their spouse as long as you've lived with your spouse. They didn't get to see all the things that have changed, but then that even plays on your mind. You say, why me? Uh, why them and not me? And so you think about all those kinds of things. But I want to tell you that God, when the world seems not to have too much of a promising prospect for your later years, God has wonderful prospects for them. I want you to look again at verse 12. This is the righteous shall flourish. It's not a suggestion, it is a promise that you'll flourish. And that word flourish means to renew that growth and spread out and be productive as we will see in just a moment. It is a promise to you for the righteous. Now preacher, I'm not doubting God's word, but I'm also not doubting my eyes. You just said that when we get older, our body begins to deteriorate our sight begins to wane, our hearing begins to fade, and if our hair doesn't fall, turn white, it turns loose. And just things begin to happen to us physically. You know, senior adult, that there's more than just the physical, there's the spiritual, and there's the emotional. There's more than just the present, there is the future. There's more than just what you're doing now, there is a legacy. And everything that you're doing is working toward those things, the future and a legacy. More than the physical, because even the Bible teaches, though the outward man perishes, the inward man is being renewed day by day. How many of you, like me, the older you get, you realize that your perspective of things change? And you think about the years that have gone by, and you look back at, 10 years and you think well that was just like last month and you think about 20 years you think well that was just last winter you take, think about 30 years and you think well that was just four or five years ago how many of you still think that the 1990s were just a few years ago yeah it's been more than 22 years ago 1999 and some of us we sit at home and we watch the me tv station or a similar station for us old folks. And we watch the old programs like Andy Griffith, Mayberry, we watch Wagon Train and Gunsmoke, we watch Raw Hide and Bonanza and things like that. And we think about, wow, those are some great characters. And then every one of them were dead. All of them were produced 50 and more years ago. And we think, where has the time gone? But when we think about living, lar living longer, think about living large, more than just the physical, the spiritual. You have learned a lot of things over the years. You're now full of sap. That is the wisdom of the ages. 
and you're able to produce in your old age. Now, I want you to think about that promise. You shall flourish like the palm tree. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. That palm tree is that beautiful tree that adorns many of the tabernacles and the tabernacle. It was a tree of adornment, of beauty, and it is also a tree of hope. A man who is traveling the desert all alone and his water supply is running low and his food supply is running low and he may be disoriented and may be lost, but he's traveling on and he sees the top of a palm tree in the distance. He rubs his eyes, he focuses and refocuses so that he will know that it's not a mirage. When he determines that that's a real palm tree, do you think his spirit is picked up or his spirit remains the same? No, it is picked up because that palm tree is a symbol of an oasis is right below it and in that area from which that palm tree feeds. You see, a palm tree can't grow in just the plain sand, but its roots go down deep to where the water is. And if there's a palm tree, there is water and refreshment and hope. And the senior adult is described like that. In addition to the beauty, a symbol of hope, a symbol of strength, a symbol of one whose roots go down deep, as well as the cedar tree a tree, both of them evergreens, whose produce and whose strength last for, through each and every season. And that cedar of Lebanon, that tall, gigantic tree, that tree that symbolizes strength and resilience through the storms. That's what you've gone through, senior adults. That's what you symbolize to those who are younger. You've seen it and you've gone through it, and you have survived. And so the righteous shall flourish like the palm. He shall grow like a cedar in Lebanon. And, though that, and those that be planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of the Lord. Not only the promise that this will happen for you, even in your old age, even in that inward man that flourishes and that is renewed day by day, there is the planting that is. You've been planted in the courts or in the house of the Lord. Now, when you plant something, it's been uh, taken from another location and relocated, and you've been planted there in the house of the Lord. Now, that's in the place of fellowship. Just this morning, we were talking about the admonitions and the admonishment of Paul to the Thessalonians in that last chapter, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and he says, I exhort one of you to be accountable one to another. Now look up here. You can't be accountable by yourself. You can't be accountable to love one another, to exhort one another in the fear, in the admonition of the Lord, if you're out there all by yourself. The Bible has no definition and no illustration of a Lone Ranger Christian who says something like this, well, I don't have to go to church to be a good Christian. I don't have to gather with the saints and worship to worship my God all by myself. Oh, yes, you do if you believe the Bible. The Bible doesn't believe in Lone Ranger Christianity. The Bible believes that we ought to gather together with one another and encourage one another and build one another up in the fellowship of the Word of God. It is foreign to Bible teaching that you and I take our Christianity and we live it by ourselves as a man all alone on an island somewhere else, uh, isolated from the rest of the world. It's not the same. And so we're planted in the house of of the Lord among those who are planted like us that we might grow up among one another and that we might share in the blessings of grace with one another planted in that grace that is given to us through the preaching of God's word through the teaching of God's word through the fellowship of God's people and for the encouragement and the exhortation and the edifying and building up of one another in the Lord and then it says that he's planted in the house of the Lord and he shall flourish in the courts 
of our God where those from the outside come to see what's happening on the inside. Dear senior saint, don't think it's over for you in your olden years, golden years. You read throughout the Bible and you think about God who has taken characters like Noah and Abraham and he has used them later on in their lives for great and wonderful things. You think about Moses, 40 years in Egypt, 40 years on the backside of the desert, and then at 80 years of age, uses him in his greatest use in those 40 years that he kept the people in the uh, wilderness and then led them up to the precipice of entering into the promised land. It ain't over until it is over. Don't you tell God that you're through when he's not through with you. And so you will be fruitful. And that's what it means in verse 14, that they shall bring forth fruit in old age, that they shall be fat and flourishing, the fruit of wisdom. These young folks today, the things that they're going through, do you ever see them going to some teenager just graduating out of high school and ask them, what would you do in this situation? No, they don't do that. They go to grandma or great grandmama. They go to mama. They ask them, what did you do? They seek the wisdom of the ages. Some might say, well, yes, Jesus wasn't but 33 years of age, though, when he, is he died. But listen, one of his names is the Ancient of Days. He is wisdom personified. And we need you to hang around, senior adults, as long as you can. And we don't need you having that attitude that you're washed up, used up, and given up on because you have a wisdom that the youth of this world have yet to experience and much less have attained. We need you. And that's what it means to be flourishing in that old age. You can tell us how it is. You've been down that road. And so you have the promise. You've been planted and you are producing in that old age because you're righteous. And lastly, you have a prophetic word for all of us. There's that proclamation that you have. Look at the last verse. In verse 15, it says, To show that the Lord is upright. He is my rock and there is no unrighteousness in him. In verse 15, where the King James, it says to show in other Bible translations, it says to proclaim, to demonstrate that the Lord is upright. I know that senior adults, you think that sometimes you're pushed to the side. Your voice is not wanted anymore. That you want, uh, the younger crowd wants to tell you, you don't know what's happening, mom. You don't know what's happening, dad. You don't know what's happening, old man. This is what's going on. And most of you comply and think it in your mind all the time, you dummy, you idiot, you don't know what you're talking about. And so your voice is silenced, but God says, don't you silence that voice. Now you really do have something to talk about. The thing about getting older and looking back at the youth of today is to remember with regret some of the dumb things that we've said and some of the dumb things that we've done. This is a time to make up for it. This is a time to say, Lord, you've given me this extra time. Lord, you've given me this extra opportunity. Now don't let me blow it this time like I did in my youth. You now have something to say and you now have something to say that is worth hearing and you now have something to say that will make a difference. You younger folks, you ever wonder why the older folks don't want to get involved with some of the things that you've got going on, the newest fad, the newest uh, thing on the market? Do you ever wonder why they just seem to be, you know, out of touch with your, quote, reality, your certain movement that's going on right now, your certain kind of involvement that you're in, that particular thing that you think is going to win the world to a great, for a great cause? No, it's not that they're not interested in it. They just know that most of it ain't going to work. You come up with that latest fad, that latest thing you're doing on it, 
and, and you'd go over to Grandmama, and Grandmama would say, come here with me. You say, where are we going, Grandma? We're going back here in the back room, this closet. And she takes you back there to the closet, and you mention something that she needs to be getting involved in, something that she needs to be aware of. And she opens that closet, and she pulls out a T-shirt, and she holds that T-shirt up there, and it says, been there, done that. Yes. <laughs> been there, done that. And she hangs it up. And you mention something else. She reaches over and gets out another colored T-shirt. says, been there, done that too. <laughs> and you just go ahead and save yourself some time and look in her closet, and it's full of those T-shirts saying, been there, done that. And it could have added, and it don't make a difference in the long run. Let me tell you, sonny boy, let me tell you, darling, what will make a difference? And senior adults, this is where you come in, and this is where you need to take your stand. And you don't need to be absent, a wall. You need to be front and center and accountable for this. It says in verse 15 that we might show that the Lord is upright. What the world is seeing today is this world is coming apart at the seams. And all other and different kinds of movements and all different kinds of efforts to make it right, it keeps toppling over. But God knows what's right and he knows how to set it up right and he knows how to keep it right because he is the upright God. And you better get into the word, senior saints, and refresh your memory and those things that were dear and near to you in your younger years. And when you first came to know the Lord and you knew what was right and you knew what was wrong, and no matter what this world says is wrong, if it's right with God, it's still right with God. And no matter what this world says is right, if it's wrong with God, it's still wrong with God. And you need to be that standard and you need to be that cedar that stands tall and that palm that refreshes and reminds them to know, thus saith the Lord, and it ain't going to change. It hadn't changed my mind. It hasn't changed God's mind. And if you want to live upright, if you want to prosper, if you want to do what's right, and you want to be successful, then you need to get upright with the upright God. Hey. Senior saints, you are our last resolve. You're our last chance and hope in these days in many situations. If you go back to camp, if you put your artillery away, and if you go back home, the front is exposed, and those coming behind you will be taken captive by the enemy, if not killed. He's left you behind that you might bring forth fruit in old age, and many times it's the best fruit yet to show the uprightness of the Lord, to show that he is your rock. Many times you have the awesome responsibility to counsel a young person. If they come to you seeking counsel and comfort and they wanna know, how did you make it, Grandma? How did you do it, preacher? And you just be honest with them. You just tell them, many times I failed. Many times I saw the error of my ways and my youth. And I stumbled along the way. I floundered. I tripped and I fell. But one day, I found this rock that is higher than I. I climbed it. I set my feet upon it. And I found that rock safe and secure. And though all about me rumbled and shook, that rock was sound. And though I fell upon that rock, I never fell off that rock. And I want to tell you, darling, I want to tell you, precious, that rock is Jesus. Get your life settled on the rock as soon as you can. 
when the wise man built his house, raised his family, made his prospects, and built it on the rock. The foolish man built his upon the sand. And when the rains came down and the floods rose and the winds blew, the foolish man lost his house and everything in it. But the house on the rock stood firm. Oh, that's your message, senior saint. God is righteous. He's upright. And Jesus is the rock that shall never be moved. And there is no wickedness to be found in him. Live your life for Jesus. Live your life for Jesus from the moment that you come to know him in faith. Through your young years, your median years, your older years, until you get to that ripe old age where God says, now the fruit is about to come forth. Now the fruit will be so plenteous that they won't have enough baskets or servants to come and gather it up. And your best years are your golden years. Don't you give up on God, senior saint. He hasn't given up on you. Would you please stand? Every head bowed and every eye closed. We're all getting older every day. The salesman was traveling out in the country looking for an address and he was lost. And he found an old man sitting out in front of an old house. And he figured this man's lived here a long time. He may know where I'm looking for for the address and certain, uh, certainly and sure enough he asked him, the man knew where he was trying to go, gave him direction. Before the salesman left though, he asked the man, said, you live here, right? He said, yeah. He said, you lived here all your life? He said, no, haven't lived all my life yet. I want you to think about that. You thinking that you're living here and you've lived here all your life? No, you still have more life to live not just time to take up space on this planet earth but to live it out for the Lord remember his promise plant yourself in the house of the Lord let your roots run deep to that living water the Lord Jesus Christ and as the vine gives sustenance to the branches Remember that we are the branches and he is the vine. And without him, we can do nothing. And don't fail to proclaim. Don't you waver. Don't you turn to the left or the right. Don't you give up proclaiming the uprightness of the Lord and his word. That he is a sure rock from which you can plant your life. And that in him there's no unrighteousness found. Live in Jesus for all to observe. For Father, we thank you for the days that you've given us. And from the ancient of days to those of us who are in, in, entering into our golden age, we pray for that wisdom, we pray for that strength, we pray for that wherewithal to help us keep on keeping on for Jesus until you give us our last breath and Lord invigorate us with that next breath of celestial air and say, well done, thou good and faithful servant. I pray and ask it in Jesus' name. Thank you, senior saints, for what you've put up with and how you've demonstrated your continued faithfulness in the Lord. You younger folks, if you've never given your heart to Jesus, do that this morning. Give your heart to Jesus. Plant your heart and your life in the courts of the Lord now. Be a tree that is growing for Jesus. Be a voice that is speaking for Jesus. Be a life that is living for Jesus for all the days of your life. You've never given your heart to Jesus. You've never been baptized or the Lord is calling you to be part of this church. You come during this time of invitation. Come right now. I'll meet you up front. We're singing hymn number 307, Just As I Am, but just as God will make you, you come with that promise that he will.
right now, you're coming. God's spoken to you. You've been praying about it. He's confirmed it. The Holy Spirit has called you. You come right now. that you've been obedient to the leading of the Holy Spirit. As we remain standing at this time, our ushers will come and receive our morning offering. Brother Nick, would you lead us in our offertory prayer, please? Lord, uh, Lord, as we take up this offering, Lord, we ask that you just use it to um, grow your kingdom, Lord, and just you see, use it how you see fit, Lord. We ask that you just continue to lead, guide, and direct us, and give, let us give where we need to, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. You may be seated. Brother, take it. sweet senior saints god bless each and every one of you i hope that you younger folks will get to experience the privilege and honor and the blessings that we are experiencing at this time and then one day we'll all be called up to heaven where we'll be in that eternal body for eternity no day but just that day forever and ever and ever i want to ask brother evel if he would lead us in our benediction our closing prayer and would you especially remember our senior saints also would you remember the family of barbara Harmon? you remember sister barbara that sits up here has a hearing problem very hard to hear lives right down the road from us she's got a grandson stage four cancer she's got a daughter patricia and the grandson's name is jimmy the daughter's patricia who's just found out she's had some of uh, the liver disease and she's having a bad day today. It's gone, turned to the worst. Sister Barbara's having some challenges too. So would you please remember Barbara Harmon, her daughter uh, Patricia, and then grandson Jimmy. May we pray as we go to the Lord in prayer. Father God, we want to thank you for these uh, special words that uh, that Pastor James gave us today. And Lord, we ask you to be with us as we go out of here. And then, uh, especially the seniors who has all the experience that they can spread it to the young folks. Yes. So they can uh, be, uh, has some wisdom in themselves. Lord, we ask you to go to this family Barbara yes. and, uh, and all the others that uh, they need uh, your comfort. They need your touch. Mm -hmm. They need your, your love mm -hmm. and your guidance. Lord, help them uh, to go into this moment mm -hmm. that they know through you they can uh, surpass anything, Lord. And uh, we thank you again for this beautiful day you gave us. Yes, Lord. And uh, Lord, we ask you to be with all of us as we go out of here. Yes. And then the most important things we're going to do is spread your word and yes. uh, everything. We all listen in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you.
Every time it's sure to be when Jesus is coming after me, I'll hear him calling me away from this whole world to stay. And when I take my Savior's hand in that place of every promised land, gonna shout and sing through in the sages, what a happy day. Oh, what a happy day. Oh, instead.